Welcome M5 board to a Vanos solenoid removal video. What I have right now is the S62 V8. First step you have to do is remove the air box and the piping and set that out of the way. You do that by unscrewing the band clamp that hooks onto the plenum and then you just fumble it out of the way. My mass airflow sensor wire is still wired in, that's not going to be in the way as long as you just throw it out of the way. The next step you want to do is right there. You want to drain your coolant because that will make it easier for you to work later on. What I did was drain it off of the uh, expansion tank right here and then I use a siphon pump for that. Once you got that out of the way you can unbolt the band clamp for the upper radiator hose and set that out of the way like such when you need to work on it. The reason why I'm not unbolting it from or unscrewing my radiator hose from here is because this is very very tightly fit and I don't want to break anything since this all here is very old and I don't want to cause more issues but this is rubber it's pliable so it will be able to bend out of the way for the short duration of the time when you get to your Vanos uh, solenoid cover which is right here okay as I bring you closer this is what we're gonna be working on there are five bolts one here, well it's a square, so you have one here, one on this corner, and one on the other corner, and one on the bottom. And then in the center, there's another bolt. What you will be needing is a 6 millimeter Allen key to unscrew it. So, there you have it. This is the Vanos cover. And, as you can see, it's wet with oil. So, apparently, my Vanos has developed a little leak in the seals. These are the seals in the time that I've had it last open. Okay, let me try and... I'm sorry, you guys are on a tripod right now, so it's not really convenient for me. But that is your Vano solenoids. You can see four solenoids. So two per bank. This one is bank two, driver's side. That's your gasket. This is not an oil... This is not a sealing gasket. It's a dust protector gasket. Um, anyway... Your next step is to pull these out. What you want to do is take this. I got this is a plier type of deal. I got this out of the t uh, car tool kit. You got to and what you want to do is open it up until it's big enough, like such. Grab each individual solenoid, uh, like such, and start wiggling them out. Okay, don't pry too hard. Do each one individually, one at a t one at a time, and go slow so you don't pull the whole solenoid out and not the rest of the board, which is that green stuff right there. And well, there you go, all four solenoids out. Um, throw a paper towel underneath. You will lose oil. Very easy. You also want to unplug the solenoid plug which is right there in the big picture there you go okay so welcome to the basement this is the vanna solenoid uh, okay so I've already started first thing you want to do is take this ring off you can see that it's right there but this is what I've done to remove it I took a hobby knife flathead screwdriver and also a thin blade box cutter and I just start prying them out little by little eventually they will pop off they are tight so you won't get them off with your fingers what is originally supposed to be on here is a uh, piece of gauze where the slits are as you can see there is no gauze there's no mesh it's all disappeared after 13 years what happens is that uh there are holes, intake holes, like that one right there. Let me try and get this 
a little better. There you go. Intake holes right there. That sucks in the uh, gauze, and then these things get clogged because this outlet hole. Eh, sorry, macro is very bad on this. That outlet hole is teeny tiny, and it won't come out. So, what you do is take some cleaner, contact cleaner, this is electrical cleaner, and then some compressed air. And just start blowing through this smaller hole, and then out this bigger one right here. So what happens is in here, out here, and then that will get you to get all the old dirt and oil out. And then what you also want to do is you see these th six little so solder points right there. Um, the two middle ones are your uh, ground and the, these, this outer one and this outer one those are your positive power things. So what you want to do is take your positive, tap it, and then connect your ground. And you will hear a high-pitched uh, click. If, as I try to demonstrate with one hand. Uh, it's hard. Maybe this isn't going to work out with one hand. But let me put this down. Just listen for the sound. And... That's a click. And... Uh, very difficult. Sorry. Very, very sorry about this. There you go. Up close and personal look at this. That's a clean one. This is a not so good one. You can hear a pitch difference. So, yep, there you go, if you heard that. Okay, now try and listen to this where I have two of them fixed compared to, to two of them that aren't fixed. 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 Not done. And not even working. Yep, I think we found our problem. Dead solenoid. Alright. Okay, so you've watched me clean them, basically. Uh, press the negative and positive to those pins, and then what you want to do, and that opens up the solenoid. You spray contact cleaner and the, the uh, what do you call it, uh, compressed air into it. That gets out a bunch of old oil and debris, clears it up. I had one dead solenoid. That's because usually these solder joints fail. Okay? So what I did was take new solder. As you can see, this is my soldering iron. I used a 40 watt. That might be a little too much for you, but be careful. Some Radio Shack Rosen Core solder. And this, which is category 5 e um like ethernet wire basically but you buy it at home depot i bought five feet for it for various projects i mean i'm an rc guy those are mini z's and i use my category 5 e wire for antennas um anyway it's just a cop it's a thin copper strand and what you do is i put it across the solder and joints and i just solder the uh, the the wire across, and then I cut off the excess, and I do that for all of them. You solder these two for the positive, then these two for the negative ground. Then you do it again for this one and this one. This one's completed. This one's completed. This one is also I just completed. Now I'm on to this last one. 
and once that is done, you'll be good to go. Some other people do have more damage to their joints, or their, uh, what am I talking about? Their solenoid boards, some people are usually missing these resistors. Um, there's a topic on M5 board on what you can do to replace them. Since mine are all here and mine are all working, as I've tested all of these, all four of these fire up, I won't have to, I won't be going into that detail with this video and just search up M5 board if you need more diagnostic help. Now that you have verified that all four solenoids work, it comes the easy part. So you have the uh, this bigger O-ring and the smaller O-ring, and they should be replaced because I mean, new, they're in a D formation type of thing where the inside is flat and the outside is round. Well, if you can see here, they're just flat on the outside now. So that's why I probably had a little leak, as you can see earlier in the video. I'll include the part numbers in the description below. But all you, all, all I'm going to do is cut the O-ring with the box cutter, dip some engine oil into with the O-rings, and then just slip them on. And then we're home free. Install is the same as uh, disassembly. So here we go, if you look very closely you can see the lip that is now apparent on the o-rings. Unsawed the uh, filter whatever things without the filters, none of them had filters anyway, but that's what 13 year old like parts do. This is the original rubber o-rings, as you can see I cut them in half. They don't feel rubbery anymore, they're really plasticky, so yeah. That's why I had a leak. Anyway, follow me outside and we're gonna get this thing installed. Solenoids still work. So we're back outside and you can see it's installed. What will happen is that your new O-rings are gonna be a very tight fit. So what I did is take the cover, I put the gasket on there too, um, and I put it on and I progressively tightened each screw little by little until it completely went in. Then I took it off, verified that it was all in properly, and rebolted it on. Your next step is to torque every uh, cover bolt, which is all five of them, to 19 newton meters or 14 pounds feet. So once you do that, you're good to go. Reassemble coolant. Refill coolant, air box, and you're done. Also, don't forget to connect the Vano solenoid. Otherwise, you will also have more problems. Lastly, what I have is a 2000 uh, October 99 build car. If you have one of the newer cars with the updated solenoids, which is primarily the facelift models, you will have grub screws on your cover. It would be one here, one here, one here, and one on the bottom. And what they essentially do is put pressure on the solenoids so they don't vibrate and break the solder joints. That is usually what happens with the 2000 models where the solder joints break and then you have vanos issues just like I did. So if you have the grub screws and you do manage to loosen the grub screws, you will have to go on M5 board, search up the DIY, and get the torque values to torque those on properly. I believe it's 16 Newton meters, but do not quote me on that. I am not 100% sure. And anyways, this will be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something from it, and I hope this quality was actually better. Thanks guys.